Hello, in this PowerPoint I'd like to talk a little bit more about earthquakes, in particular talking about predictions and probabilities, and concluding with a little bit about earthquakes here in the Pacific Northwest. In all the years of working on earthquakes or working in seismology, there's been only one earthquake that has been successfully predicted, and that was in February of 1975 a 7.3 magnitude earthquake, the Haichen earthquake, located over here, was successfully predicted by Chinese seismologists. Here's an image of the damage. Here is a big scale map of where this earthquake epicenter was located. The authorities did some evacuation of the major cities here, and uh, despite uh, several thousand people perishing uh, in the earthquake, um, Several thousand did not perish as a result of the evacuation in the city. So that was the only time. A year later, less than a year later, a major earthquake occurred in Tangshan, just across from the location here, uh, which resulted in tens of thousands of casualties. So uh, they got this one and they missed that one. Now since then, there have been no successful predictions of earthquake events anywhere in the world. Uh, there have been some efforts to make broad suggestions of when an earthquake would occur, but it has not been um, anywhere close to one that actually has occurred. So now instead, uh, seismologists, uh, scientists, are reduced, if you will, not from prediction, but to the probabilities that the earthquake will occur in some areas. Uh, and that's represented in this map as a result of, or showed, showing um, where the hazards are lowest and where the hazards are highest. And this approximation is shown in this colored contoured map, uh, and it's based on a lot of different geological and geophysical or earthquake-related data. So as you can see, the highest hazard areas are here located on the west coast, where we have a transform boundary here, and a convergent boundary here in the Pacific Northwest. There's also high earthquake uh, hazards located around the Yellowstone hotspot and out here in the Nevada desert where we have uh, normal faults and extension going on. So this is pretty well known. We know this area is active. There's volcanoes up here, active hydrothermal activity, uh, and a nice subduction zone. We know there's a transform fault here. So no surprises here. Now what is surprising are these other areas of relatively high hazard that are associated with these old plate boundaries. The New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 and 1812, the Charleston earthquake in 1886, and then some seismic activity up here which is related to the St. Lawrence Seaway. So we know about this. We can, we've done a lot of preparation, especially in California and now in Washington and Oregon, um, but out here we have not done a lot of pre um, preparation and so these are real real hazards. If an earthquake happens out here, there'll be a lot of damage. So let's focus a little bit on the earthquake probability for the Pacific Northwest. Now here is a model for the Cascade, Cascadia subduction zone. The Juan de Fuca plate is subducting underneath the North American plate here. The melting of the crust is producing the chain of um, earthquakes. So there have been earthquakes in the past, and they take up uh, three different types. Let's start with the most recent one. There have been deep earthquakes along this subduction zone. Uh, the most recent one, 2001, uh, that um, occurred in the Seattle area, in the Squally. There have also been earthquakes in the North American plate, where rocks have broken and seismic energy has been released. There's been a documented one in 900 A.D. and one in 1872, which created some uh, damage. Now, the problem here, and the most problematic and dangerous one, are these subduction zone earthquakes. Okay, there has not been a large magnitude subduction er earthquake since 1700. Okay, and there's been a lot of work um, getting uh, the data related to documenting this earthquake. So in 1700, there was a very large magnitude earthquake that occurred along the subduction zone that resulted in a tsunami and likely large ground shaking um, within the Pacific Northwest. Now, there's no record of this um, in terms of the amount of damage. Um, the 
I, but, and there's lots of evidence to suggest this happened, including records in Japan of a major tsunami that occurred around the same time. So, we are overdue for a big subduction zone related earthquake. Now, as a result of this new geologic data and the fact that we have this active plate boundary, here is a map that shows the potential for ground acceleration related to a major earthquake um, where the, there's a 2% probability that there will be this earthquake happening in the next 50 years that will produce this acceleration. The brown and red areas are high areas of acceleration, meaning the ground will shake. And as we go away from the subduction zone, the amount of ground shaking decreases. Now there are these areas of high ground shaking and these are associated with zones that have faults. Out here in uh, northeastern uh, Oregon, down near Klamath Falls, and up here in the Seattle area. So if this earthquake happens, or when this earthquake happens, there'll be a lot of ground shaking along the coast and that ground shaking will also be evident all the way through um, most of Oregon, although decreasing as we move away from the plate boundary. So what does this mean in terms of the intensity? That is the um, amount of energy released and the damage that that energy does. Well, here is the acceleration, and I've tried to color code these layers according to this uh, pattern. Here is the damage estimates, and here is the intensity. So along the coast, we will have lots of heavy to very heavy damage um, that occurs as a result of this earthquake. As we move inland towards Portland, somewhat Eugene, up into Seattle, we get up into the intensity levels of sevens and eights. We have moderate to moderate heavy damage. And then as we move in towards Eugene, and um, Corvallis and further east, we get light to moderate damage within this area. So this is going to be a significant event and uh, these major cities will be undergoing lots of ground shaking as a result of this. So let's try to picture this a little bit. Okay, so this is an image that I took from the internet and here is the same map. Okay, so along this boundary, okay, we have um, intensity levels of four to six. So there's slight damage to buildings and people run outdoors. So we will feel this. There'll be some damage, especially to um, structures that aren't well designed and well built. Um, and people will certainly feel that. So that's over a pretty large area. Now as we get closer to the coast, note that we're including Portland and Seattle and maybe Corvallis. We'll be getting uh, intensity levels of seven to nine, moderate to heavy damage, buildings jolted off foundations or destroyed. So that's significant. Now right near the coast and offshore, we'll get very large magnitude or large uh, Mercalli scales, 10 to 12, great destruction, cracks appear in ground, waves seen on surface, and without a doubt there'll be a large tsunami okay, that will be um, generated. So that will be problems for the coast. So, uh, in a recent interview, Chris Goldfinger, who's an OSU geology professor and has done a lot of work along the coast, um, indicated that, according to his best estimates, there's going to be a 40% chance of a large magnitude earthquake in the Pacific Northwest in the ne next 50 years. Now, that's some pretty dire warnings, and um, as I've said before, it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. So that's outlined here, earthquakes in the Pacific Northwest, not if, but when. It's pretty scary. So what can I or we do? Well, the best thing we can do is be prepared for this eventuality. Okay, so as an individual, some of the things you can do is you can develop a plan of what types of things you will do if an earthquake happens. For instance, contacting people uh, that live in the area, contacting parents, contacting friends, so that we can check on people. Now while the earthquake is occurring, it's recommended that you follow the same, this, this drill, drop cover by crawling under a heavy piece of furniture and hold on um, until the ground shaking ceases. And there are other things like if you're outdoors, you should get away from power lines and tall trees. Uh, if you're in your car, you should stay in your car and so forth. Of course, staying calm will help. Um, 
these ground shaking will stop. And if you're at or near the coast, there's a high probability of a tsunami. You, once the ground shaking stops, you should head for high ground and stay there. And stay there because the waves may arrive for hours. So uh, in the high ground you should be looking for um, should be up to 10 meters or more above the coastline. And most coastal communities have a tsunami evacuation plan and you can see signs there. Now as a homeowner, um, you should probably get earthquake insurance. Uh, you should get uh, earthquake retrofits for your structures that will cause it to not collapse and maybe even withstand the earthquake shaking. And also be prepared with food, water, shelter, and plans in terms of how you'll contact people that need to be contacted. So I hope this helps and thank you very much.